Today I'm working on the caddis problem called Take Two Stones. Storyline for this one is Alice and Bob are playing a new game of stones. There are N stones placed on the ground forming a sequence. The stones are labeled from 1 to N. So they take turns taking exactly two consecutive stones on the ground until there's none left. If there's an odd number of stones left, then Alice is the winner, and if not, then Bob is the winner. So basically, this is an even-odd game. Um, and if you look at the outcomes from sample input, sample output, in the first example it's 1, Alice wins, 2, Bob wins, 5, Alice wins. So although the problem wording makes it seem much more complicated, it really boils down to even-odd. So I'm going to start with Python 3 and then do the same problem in C++ and Java. So to start with, I'm just defining x as an integer data type, user input, and then setting up my conditional statements to determine who the winner is. And I'm using the modulo operator here, which is that parentheses, um, sorry, the percentage sign. So if x modulo 2, which is how I would, the logic you would use to determine if it's even or odd. So I'm saying if it's even, then Bob is the winner. So print Bob, else print Alice. So we don't have to say if x modulo 2 equals 1, which would be our indicator for an odd outcome. We can just say else because the number is either even or odd. So now I'm just running through some sample test cases, stones. I'm going to input one, and Alice should be the winner, and it worked for that. So it looks like it's working. I'm just going to take out the prompt stones and then copy and paste this into the caddis coding area and submit. And I'll fast forward through these 1,000 test cases. A little bit of overkill. And we're done. Okay, so now we're on to programming the same problem in C++. And you'll notice for today's video, I finally upgraded to actually using VS Code, Visual Studio Code from uh, last couple of videos. I was just using online compilers because I had to, um, I only had Python actually running with the extensions and the all the things in the background you have to do, like setting the environment, variable path, and and downloading programs and all that fun stuff. So it's over and I've got it up and running. So it will be much better in the long run. So right now I'm just changing directories to go into the new directory I just created, two stones. And I'm gonna make a new C++ file also called two stones. And there we go. Now we're ready to input our first line. As always, include IO stream using namespace standard std semicolon and then I'm just going to use the same logic as I did in the Python file but convert it to C++ alright so I'm gonna start out with my int main function and put everything in brackets and then define variable x as an integer. And I'm gonna do this one a little bit different just to show different approaches to the same problem. So here I'm just defining a string variable called winner. Then I'm gonna read in x, which is the input, telling us the number of stones and use some conditional statements just like we did in Python. So if the condition goes in parentheses, then brackets around the next instruction. So here I'm gonna declare what the variable, or not declare, um, assign a value to the variable. 
So if x modulo 2 is 0, that means it's an even number and Bob is the winner. Okay, so these red squiggly marks you see are syntax errors I have. The first one is x modulo 2 equals 0. So the thing about equal sign, one equal sign in C++ means you are assigning a value to that variable. But two equal signs together means you're um, comparing two values, meaning it's a true-false type of outcome. Is x modulo 2 equal to 0? That's the relation or the um, relative comparison. So if x modulo 2 is 0, then it's an even number and Bob is the winner, so it's going to assign the value Bob to the variable winner, else winner equals Alice. And here I'm about to run a test run through. I am missing something. Can you see what it is? I'm about to figure it out, but we're going to go to terminal, run build test desk, and choose a choose a compiler. So I'm going to select the G++ and now that it built it, you'll see an exe file appear next to or underneath the C++ file. All right, so now we're ready to run it. So in the terminal, I'm just going to type dot backslash and the name of the file to run it. You could also do this um, by your standard ways, just going to run and run file. So I'm missing something here. I input one and I get no output. And that's because I forgot to put a print statement in. So let's add this line C out winner. So it's going to output the winner value. Whatever value has been assigned to the string variable winner is going to be printed there. I'm still missing something. What are we missing? Oh, I didn't. Um, so every time you change it, you have to go back and build it again to reload the new code and the executable. Okay, so let's try this again. Test case one and it outputs Alice. So that is correct. Let's try it again with an odd or an even number zero Bob. All right, so the code's working now. 1001 just for fun. And you can always use clear to clear your terminal. C-L-E-A-R. I'm going to copy all this code. Go back into Caddis and paste it. Make sure I didn't forget to delete anything and submit. And while that's finishing up, I'm going to get ready to start coding in Java. So let's go to new file, Java class. So I want to go up a directory there. CD means change directory and two dots just means go up one folder or one level of hierarchy. And then LS means list all. So I'm just seeing um, what all the folder names are so I don't mistype it. And then I'm going to change directory dot backslash is current location. And then Java is the new folder I want to move to. And in the next line, you can see my present working directory is now caddis java folder which is where i'd like to place my file so in caddis i'm going to go ahead and change the language to java from the drop down and then go see what my java file name will be once I paste it in there, since that's going to have to be the name of my main class and file name. I'm just going to the tutorial website I like to use to refresh my memory on um, the syntax for public static void main string brackets args 
in parentheses and then brackets for your actual program. So my public class is called two stones and then my main method is the line I just typed. Now we can actually start typing or defining the variable integer type x. I'm going to use the same method I used in uh, C++ where I define a new variable, a string variable called winner. Java string is capital. And you can generally tell if it's uh, if it should be a reserved word and it's not highlighting. Like you can see int is in green and string is also in green, but before I capitalized it, because it's case sensitive, it was just in white like regular code. So that gives you some inclination that you've got a case sensitive error or typo or something. And uh, just looking at the website, this tells you about the different data types and how many bits or bytes they are. So now we're ready for reading in the input data, which means we're going to need the scanner class. So I'm going to import java.util.scanner. At the top, before the public class two stones, and then inside the main method, I'm going to create a new scanner object. I'm just going to call it n, since this is the point of input. New scanner system dot n. I'm just adding some documentation here so I get in the habit of doing it. Even though this is so simple, it's not really necessary. I think good documentation is one of those things it's easy to get lazy about and it's probably one of the things that separates very good coders from new coders and uh, just less quality coders. So I'm trying to get in a better habit of documenting everything. And then uh, if in parentheses my condition, if x modulo 2 equals 1 brackets in Java, not colon, winner, which is my string variable I initiated above, will have a set value or assigned value of Alice. And it's a string, so that means it has to go in quotation marks. And adding a semicolon after that line. And then after the close brackets, for the previous conditional statement, I'm going to make an else statement. Else winner equals Bob. Semicolon. And now I need to add a print line at the end so we have some type of output telling us who the winner was. So I'm trying to do this from memory without looking it up. And it should be print line, not line. System.out dot print line, but I'll see that error when I run it in a second. And what we want to print goes in parentheses, so that'll be the variable winner, whether it's Alice or Bob. And now here I'm just closing the scanner object that we created. So n was the name of the object that we used to read in the user input. and just as good practice, we always want to close out the reader, whatever language you're in. I'm just leaving a note there. It's not required here because technically, you know, the program's all self-contained. There's no memory leak because uh, everything's terminated at the end of the program. So really, you don't need to, but I'm doing it anyway. And then just one more syntax error I'm cleaning up here, adding a double equal sign for the conditional condition if x modulo 2 equals equals 1. Because we're not assigning a value to x modulo 2, we're comparing. So remember when you 
using a comparative operator, it's a double equal sign. And when you're assigning a value, it's a single equal sign. So here's your Java operators, assignment operator. So there's your single equals at the top there when you're assigning a value to a variable location. And then, and here I'm scrolling down to the Java comparison operators. And the first line is your double equal sign. And below that, you've got logical operators. So equals and double equals mean different things. All right, so I stopped filming and forgot to hit start recording again, but pretty much I was already done and just running the test cases now in Caddis. And there you go. That was the two stones problem in Caddis in Python 3, C++, and Java. And next time, I think I'm going to be doing the solving for carrots. See you next time.